We've seen interest in white space radio pick up enormously over the last six months. What really interested us about white space at Null was the availability of a very large amount of high quality spectrum free of charge. And that remains the case. So our experiments show that there's something like 150 megahertz of free spectrum available in the white spaces on a very attractive frequency on 600 megahertz. Um, and that compares with um, you know, a typical 3G network that might have to make do with 30 megahertz of arguably inferior spectrum. So an application that I'm particularly excited by is, uh, is rural broadband. And that's because um, white space can, can really make a major difference to people's lives uh, right now. Um, so for example, in a small village just outside Cambridge, uh, they currently get virtually no broadband. You couldn't call it broadband. It's less than 500 kilobits per second. Um, we've installed a demo network that connects that village, um, a village called Orwell, um, to a, a nearby town five or six kilometers away using a white space link. And um, the user who, is, who has that link is now um, getting something like eight times their previous best broadband speed. One problem with white space radio up until now has been the lack of availability of commercial equipment. Um, we fixed that now at Null. Our, um, our networking system called Nullnet, the world's first FCC and Ofcom compliant radios, has been sold to customers in Europe, in Asia and in the US. At Null, we see that the real mass market for white space radio networks is machine to machine comms. So machine to machine is currently pretty small, uh, just a few tens of millions or low hundreds of millions of connections. But ultimately, uh, we believe that it's gonna be bigger than cellular. In fact, uh, you could imagine your, all the meters in your home might be connected, your car might have a couple of connections, and uh, you know, even um, white goods and consumer electronics could, also, could all ultimately be connected to the, uh, to the internet. Smart metering um, is a really interesting and rapidly growing market hundreds of millions of smart meters will be installed around the world over the next um, five or 10 years. Um, and smart meters have genuinely unique communication issues that aren't solved with any existing technology. Um, whereas with a cellular system, it's okay just to cover 70% of the geography of a particular country. Um, for a smart metering um, networking system, you really have to be able to get hold of every single house so you can make sure that everyone gets their electricity bill, for example. Power consumption is also a, a big issue. Um, when you install a smart meter in someone's home, then you really don't want to have to go back to replace the battery in the lifetime of the meter. What's needed is a wireless technology that's designed for machines, not people. Um, the problem with cellular is that it's designed for people, which is fantastic if you want to make a phone, but if you want to make a smart meter, you've got all the problems that we've talked about before. Null's technology, um, based on the weightless standard which we're supporting, is designed specifically for machine-to-machine -machine communications. Machine-to-machine um, -machine has been held back for too long by um, existing wireless, trying to retrofit existing wireless technologies designed for people into applications that they were never really intended for. White space radio spectrum makes the idea of a dedicated network for machine-to-machine -machine comms a realistic possibility. But what's needed is a true open standard for that network. We're already starting to see a consensus forming among industry leaders that white space represents the best opportunity yet to create a standard for machine-to-machine -machine comms. Um, Null is, is part of that. And in fact, we're, uh, we're supporting an event that's occurring at the end of this month on the 30th of September here in Cambridge, um, where um, we should start to see a really stimulating debate about um, the form that the standard should take.